nailed it. But as you can see, as we get started here, uh, everything is set. Twelves, don't laugh at see, uh, San Diego. Don't don't laugh at him. Too loud. <laughs> Back here live at the Mopop. First and ten, and it will be Killer Mike in the white jerseys. Rick Ditto in those dark blue Seahawk uniforms, AJ. Yeah, Killer Mike coming out here, throwing a quick pass for a pickup of six yards on that first play. Derek Carr, great item right there at quarterback. Great player uh, that he's able to put into his lineup, slide him in. He's got a little bit of speed. He can scramble just a little bit, but uh, he can make all the throws, and you don't spend too much of your cap on him getting that team of the year addition. Second and four for Killer Mike. In the gun there, and he's got his quarterback. Back offset to the right-hand side. It comes a blitz off the right-hand side. It's picked up, and he gets the pass out into the flat, and that's enough for another first down. So, off the bat, Killer Mike doing what he needs to do, methodically moving the ball down the field. I think they call that matriculation. Is that right? Yeah, so far so good. Two plays, first down again. Now he's at the 35. One thing I want to note about these players, there's a lot of different versions of NFL players in Madden Ultimate Team. You're able to play with everything from an 89 overall Richard Sherman and then you've got that 97 overall they've got different programs that allow you to stay with it and stay Ooh. into it year round uh, you know you've got team of the week items during the football season you've got team of the year after the season's over uh, right now they're doing a lot of different promotions so a lot of things to keep people interested even outside of the NFL season as the Super Bowl is over as we know uh, but we're into the combine and then the NFL draft and you know, there's a lot of programs to keep these guys uh, motivated to play Madden Ultimate Team. Derek Carr last pass incomplete. This time hits his tailback, the running back, Coleman, out of the backfield there. Uh, minimal gain there, so it's going to be actually none yards there. Third and ten for Killer Mike, and we've got our first big down of the game. First of many here for the, for the Seahawks championship, the Madden 17 Seahawks championship live here at the Rain City in Seattle here at the Mopop, the Museum of Pop Culture. And he's back. Oh, almost sacked. Gets it off just in time. It's an incomplete pass. So now we've got a huge fourth down for Killer Mike. Good defense there by the competitor. Yeah. Rick Ditto. Yeah, Ricky just sent that blitz right up the gap, and that gets right to the quarterback, causing a fourth and ten. Derek Carr is not going to outrun that one <laughs> uh, like we saw Michael Vick doing. He was absolutely screaming, but it looks like Killer Mike's going to go for it here. So funny to see those single bar face masks out there in yeah. 2017 playing with these guys. Now, I'm sorry, I got to chuckle out of that. Fourth and 10, here we go for Killer Mike. Got to complete this, or it's going to be a turnover on downs, and he fixes, and he hits his man, Jerry Rice, coming across the middle on that drag route. Got him on the dig, and it picks up enough yardage for the first down for Killer fantastic Mike. Fantastic read and fantastic play there by Killer Mike as you saw him move players over to the right side of the field to pick up that corner blitz. He knew it was coming from Rip Ditto. Coming out that right side, he got the pickup, he picked up those blocks, and then he backpedaled with Derek Carr, completed the pass over the middle of the field to Jerry Rice, picks up a first down. So he ends that and picks up that fourth down conversion. Can you see Richard Sherman or Cam Chancellor or Earl Thomas or somebody like that or Lane wearing the single bar face mask for the Seahawks? And he's going deep and it's not caught. It's picked off, making fun of the guy with the single bar face mask. And look what he does in 2017 yeah, Paul, with the pick, Paul Krause. Paul Krause, uh, you know, single bar or not, he's able to see the football well there. He's got great hands. That player item, that is why guys like him in their lineup. He's got great hands. He's not going to drop a lot of picks. That's it. So he jumps up, picks that ball off. Paul Krause uh, returns it to the eight-yard line. And now Rip Ditto takes over. Rip Ditto, and that's way out of bounds there on a first and ten. Inside of his own ten-yard line, he does get the turnover on the pick there from Paul Krause, and I learned about Paul Krause when I was out at the Vikings series, and everybody played with him in Minnesota. I'm like, why is everybody picking this guy with the single bar? And they said, because he catches everything. But he did drop, like, the first three picks in that game, so I'm like, okay, whatever. But uh, uh, generally speaking, he does have great hands. You're right about that, AJ. Second and 10, here we go. Rodgers, look, oh, he's sacked in the end zone. No, just gets it off just in time, avoiding that safety there on defense. Yeah, that was tough. If I, uh, you know, I, I wish he'd have stepped up into the pocket a little bit as you saw that pressure coming off the left side. Uh, but he hangs on to it, just barely gets the ball out. Uh, instead of a fumble or a sack safety, uh, he ends up just taking an incomplete pass. So sec or third and ten now here from the eight-yard line. Third and ten for Rip Ditto. Rip Ditto, 8-3-0, representing Crystal 
City, Texas going down the middle. Was that caught there? I think he does hang on. No, he does not. And that's one of the things that Deion Sanders probably not the greatest at, catching the ball in traffic. Yeah, we see, and we see uh, Paul Krause there again on the play, going for the legs, uh, you know, knocking him out from under him as he goes for the aggressive catch. You can play the man, you can play the receiver, holding down the A button, you can play the ball, uh, trying to swat the ball with the X button, or you can go for the interception with Y. Obviously, going for the interception is a riskier play. Right there, though, he knocks the ball away. Deion Sanders can't hang on to it. It's tough to do in triple coverage. That is exactly why. When you're in coverage, you have to have a really high catch in traffic rating to catch the ball in traffic. Can't hang on to it there. He's upended by Paul Krause, and that uh, forces him to punt the ball. Good call there to punt the ball. Absolutely. You agree? Yeah, absolutely. You want to punt the ball from your own eight. I think uh, even early on, it's still a 0-0 ball game. So uh, it's kind of a wash. You did, pick up, you did pick off that pass, so it was a free possession anyway. I think he was smart to punt the ball from his own eight. Second and five. Ball goes over on the, the punt there by Rip Ditto. So Killer Mike now with the ball. Second and five. He's around midfield. Can he get this thing going? When you look at Killer Mike, strength is defense. So you're not going to score a lot. He's got his tail back in the flat, and it's Coleman going out of bounds into Rip Ditto territory there. Yeah, we see this Tevin Coleman player item a lot, this Super Bowl edition. He's a 95 overall. These guys like to use him. And uh, right there, Killer Mike makes use of him in the passing game as he completes that pass into the flat, picks up another first down. Strengths for Killer Mike. He talked about defense and using Deion Sanders, and he makes plays for him all over the field. And that's exactly what he's been doing early on on defense. Now, Killer Mike on offense and see what he can do. Running, throwing, he's pretty balanced there. Uh, doesn't really lean heavily on one side. Right now, he's been working on the passing attack there, and he's got... Yeah, for those Church of you watching right. at home, I want you to pay attention to what Killer Mike is doing right here, moving his running back to the right side of the field because he's been seeing that defensive end over screaming the over the, the right field. side. It's Jordan Cameron down inside the five to about the one-yard line. That was a dot right there across the middle. Great dot to Jordan Cameron. Nice little setup plays, throwing it over to his running back, Tevin Coleman, over and over again. He's throwing at the blitz. That's what you, they always teach you. You want to throw towards wherever the blitz is coming from, and he did that, set up that play to his tight end hits Jordan Cameron for the big pass. All right, now we've got the jumbo set there off balance. Oh, the quarterback sneak and woohoo! <laughs> Gotta watch out right there, trying to do the sneak right across the middle. Great hit there by Rip Ditto. Yeah, great stop. All these guys have a goal line defense, they have a quarterback sneak defense. It's not a hundred percent, but they have something that can stop it. So let's see if. Killer Mike can punch it in. He does, Larry. He does Larry. punch it in that time. Absolutely. That is a touchdown on the quarterback sneak. So it is Killer Mike. Yes, the command post controller from the Air Force. Four-year veteran in our Air Force, and he has the lead. The extra point is up and good. It's a 7-0 lead for Killer Mike. The sixth seed looking to continue on this journey and upset the world here for the seven, the Madden 17 Seahawks championship as Rip Ditto gets the ball back again. Yeah, and I, I talk about guys hanging on to it, kneeling the ball in the end zone or taking the fair catch. That time, Deion Sanders breaks it past the 25, and I've seen him break it more. You have seen him break it for a touchdown, so that's why you're seeing a lot of those with Deion Sanders. You feel confident that he can return it for a touchdown sometimes. Here we go, first and 10. Rip Ditto in the dark blue jerseys. Plenty of time. Oh, and the sack coming off that left edge. That is Khalil Mack. That Larry. is. Khalil Mack, one of the favorites in Madden Ultimate Team. He's got speed. He's got hit power. He's got hands sometimes, too. So that's a guy that you would like to see in your lineup. You're going to have to spend some cap points on him. 98 overall, Khalil Mack, though, coming off the edge. You saw him making those swim moves and then spinning back to the inside to get to the quarterback. Nice pickup there by Randy Moss there. So uh, some of that yardage he gets back. Third and 10 now for Rip Ditto. Uh, the number two seed in this tournament, the Madden 17 Seahawks Championship. And he's looking deep over the middle. And is it hauled in? It is hauled in. No, it's not. Incomplete there. So we've got a fourth down here. So if you rip ditto, do you chance it and go for it? Or do you once again punt it and live to fight another day? 
He looks like he's going to punt this one. I, I think uh, I think that's a great stop there by Killer Mike. Killer Mike once again proving that he deserves to be here. He might be the sixth seed. He might be only two, ranked 251st in the series ranks, but right now he's playing a heck of a game against Rip Ditto, who's one of the favorites coming in, the two seed, uh, and right now he forces him to punt the ball. Any given Thursday here live here in Seattle at the Mopop, the Museum of Pop Culture here. And once again, the Madden 17 Seahawks Championship, and we've got a, a six seed man that's coming through and trying to bust up the Seahawks bracket here. Killer Mike in the armed forces, the Air Force, the command post controller. And you look at it, AJ, I just don't notice this. This is strength versus strength. You got a guy in Killer Mike that's really good on defense, and then we know what Rip Ditto does, throwing some dots on offense, and right now it's tip your hat to that defense, and I'm sure the 12s here following the LOB can really appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Killer Mike playing killer defense right now. He looks like the Legion of Boom uh, playing defense right now and uh, hanging on to... Uh, you know, making Rip Ditto punt the ball to him there again and just unable to score points right now. Rip Ditto, very good offensive player, like you said. He came in number two in this tournament, hasn't been able to put up many points. He had a comeback victory in his first game. He almost lost that first one. Uh, so, you know, it's going to be interesting to see if he can come back again. Well, when you look at Rip Ditto, he's a family man. He's got a wife. Uh, a Christian, a follower of God, so he's doing a lot of great things there. That's a great catch there by Killer Mike, swerving and picking up the first down, but uh, I would never count out a guy like Rip Ditto. He's been through the process. He's had some ups and downs. He's representing the 8-3-0 of Crystal City, Texas, so he's going to be a tough out. Yeah, he's sure. got that special jersey right there with his area code, the 830, representing, uh, you know, the town of Crystal City, just southwest of San Antonio. Uh, small town, he's got a lot of lab partners, and when I'm talking about <laughs> lab partners, I'm talking about guys you practice Madden with. When you're talking about being in the lab, if you're new to Madden, when you're in the lab, you're practicing the game, you're in practice mode, head-to-head, -head, you're just running plays, trying to see what you can do against different types of defensive looks. They're putting in a lot of time in the lab. Got a receiver down the right side, and it's caught there on a dot, a dime that's dropped right there on the right side into territory there for Killer Mike uh, into Rip Ditto's territory about the 28-yard line. Yeah, great pass there down the sideline, picks up a first down. Uh, and now Killer Mike looking very strong on offense and defense uh, as Rip Ditto just can't seem to find an answer to it. Rip Ditto's got a bow his neck here. He's got a receiver down the right side, and it is caught there on the, the corner route inside the five-yard line, sets up first and goal. So the sixth seed looking to go up 14-0 and shock the 12s here. Well, actually, the 12s are behind him. He plays with Seattle, so they're not shocking anybody. <laughs> Yeah, great little corner out there by Killer Mike. He's back into this I formation, though, here in the red zone at the three. Fullback dive there, up the gut. Uh, give him a gain of maybe one there. So second and goal from the two-yard line uh, for Killer Mike, uh, who, look, when we talked pregame, he did not mention offense. I tried to go to him and talking about offense. He's like, I just play the game, I'll take what he gives me, but my calling card is defense, and right now he's playing great defense, and offensively, surprising some folks, dropping in some dots there against the dot master being Rip Ditto. Yeah, he absolutely has been impressive on offense. Right now, he's just trying to punch this in, at least take three points, and take a two-possession lead uh, as we get inch ever so much closer to the first half being over. And, uh, you know, as we see there, a lot of great defensive players for Rip Ditto that are gonna try to prevent him from punching this in. He's not close enough to try a quarterback sneak, which we saw him score on the last time. Uh, so he's gotta find something, something in this three yard territory. Third and go, and he jumps up, and he, what a great grab there on the right hand side. How about this kid from Costa Mesa, California, the Air Force veteran, up and good with the PAT, and he is up big time, 14 nothing here for the Madden 17 Seahawks Championship live here at the Mopop. Good gracious. Yeah, that's a great lead to start off with. When you're up 14, you're feeling a little more confident. You know that you only have five minute quarters. You know that you're leaving uh, a guy like Rip Ditto who is able to score quickly less time. Uh, but you know anything's possible. This, this, there was a 17 to three lead uh, that 
Killer Mike, or sorry, that Rip Ditto came back from in the yeah. first uh, game in the quarterfinals. So it'll be interesting. Uh, I think he can come back. So he's got to stay on, keep him on his heels with this defense. Killer Mike has to keep his foot on the gas. You talked about that game with Rip Ditto, Ricky uh, Cisneros, uh, what, 21 straight unanswered points to close out that game to get that 21-17 lead. So he's demonstrated before. He's shown that he's got the ability to come back and come back big. Oh, the fumble there, not a fumble hit as he's throwing, and that's incomplete. So third and nine here for Killer Mike, and wow, Killer Mike, he talked about he was the best at on defense. He covers the entire field, and I said, what do you mean by that? He's like, I've got Teon Sanders. He gets it done for me, and he's proving that he's tough to throw on, and also he's adding in a little pass rush, too. That's making him pretty lethal, AJ. Yeah, he's, he's mixing it up well on defense. He's doing a great job moving the ball and playing defense, great. and there's a nice little strip there preventing Jimmy Graham from hanging on to the football. Uh, nice read, but he's going to force another fourth down, and Rip Ditto is going to have to dig into that offensive playbook. He needs a score, so he's probably going to go for it on this fourth down. Fourth and nine here. Do you go for it? Do you punt it? Try to stay in this thing because right now, I mean, if you do not pick up this first down here, you're setting up Killer Mike in great field position. So he's looking down the middle of the field. Oh, and he's hit, and it's picked off. He gets up, and is that Kraus there again? That is Kraus with the interception. You might have you might have rather had the incomplete pass there sure. on fourth and nine, but uh, you'll take the interception. He turns the ball over, and now you take over at the 43. Certainly within scoring distance, uh, as he's already put 14 on the board. I am very, very happy with what I've seen from Killer Mike so far in this game. You know how they always say, can these old guys, can they play today? Are they big enough, fast enough, strong enough to play today? Paul Kraus is all of that. He could play in 2017. Or maybe I'm just overselling you. Yeah, my, Mike told me his favorite player on his squad was Deion Sanders because he can shut down any wide receiver on the field. Uh, similar thing to what young Kiv said. So they've got a similar uh, mentality as far as what they want in their secondary. But I think he's got to be very happy with Paul Krause. I think he's got to name him his favorite player, give him the game ball, uh, the virtual game ball after this one with two interceptions so far. Second and 10 for Killer Mike. Two-minute warning here with the ball and a two-score lead up 14-0 over the second-seeded Rip Ditto. Back for Killer Mike. Michael Clark looking out, and he hits his tight end. Cameron in the flat out in the right-hand side. Uh, picks up some yardage there. Third and six now for Killer Mike as the time continues to tick, tick, tick uh, at the 34-yard line. Yeah, he's hanging on to all those big hit uh, footballs which is good. You can drop a lot of them. We've seen Rip Ditto drop a lot more of those so far today. Sometimes the breaks just don't go your way, but he oh, hangs on to that one. Goes his way this time for Rip Ditto. I was pointing at the screen. You saw that. Had a receiver wide open in the left-hand side in the flat. He decided to go for all of the marbles down the middle of the field, and Rip Ditto uh, with an important interception to keep himself in the ball game. Now he's got a little time as well. A buck 34 left. Down 14 nothing. He gets the turnover, AJ. Yeah, Mike got a little aggressive there. He probably didn't need to be, but he saw a man. His man was open for a second in the end zone, but uh, you're not going to make that throw very regularly, even uh, with Derek Carr. So that, that's a good try, but uh, he throws the interception. That's secondary by Rip Ditto. Still too good to attempt that throw. Second and eight for Rip Ditto. In the dark blue Seahawks jersey. He's got a man down. Can he catch it? And he, no, he can't hold on. The strip by Killer Mike. I mean, Killer Mike has been killing it on defense. If he gets beat, he strips it. He's there. Sacks, coverage, it's all there for him. A tough road to hold for Rip Ditto. Trying to, 14 seems like 40 right now. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. It's tough breaks for Rip Ditto there, but he is throwing some difficult catches. Uh, that one was in the seam to Randy Moss. Randy Moss has the speed. It looked like he might have gotten his hands onto it. Watch uh, out, the sack. Gets it off just in time. Yeah, on the rack catch attempt, uh, on that streak there up the middle, but he can't hang on to it. And Killer Mike doing a great job using that secondary. He did invest in his safeties for a reason. He knew he needed that. So he's invested in safeties like Paul Krause to be back there and knock the ball loose whenever he throws it to a man in their zone. Maybe that's why Killer Mike goes for it and he can be aggressive because he's so confident in that defense that's been balling. He has every reason to be right now. Sure. He's playing stellar defense against one of the best offenses in this championship. Fourth and eight for Rip Ditto, 8-3-0. Oh. 
Oh, got to pick up a first down here, and it is completed on the right-hand side. He's got the redhead, Jimmy Graham, uh, with the completion there on the right-hand side, moves the sticks. Yeah, Jimmy Graham, a big target. He's got speed, not necessarily the best run blocker or pass blocker, but he's got that height and that aggressive catch ability. So you use him like you use another wide receiver, but you get to line him up at tight end in this mode. So uh, a great play there by Jimmy Graham to pick up another first down. And uh, Rip Diddle's got to get the ball. Just stay consistent. He's got 55 seconds. If you score here, you cut it to seven, uh, and you're not in a, in a bad spot. No, and I remember covering Jimmy Graham when I worked in Miami when he was playing on the University of Miami Hurricane basketball team, and he was good. I mean, people talk about Julius Peppers. This guy was just as big, and he could jump out of the gym uh, for the University of Miami. No doubt in my mind, if he probably put his mind to it, he may have uh, been able to play uh, in the association, the NBA. That's how good of an athlete he was and still is. That's why he's really good here with the 12s and making that trade uh, with the New Orleans a few years ago. So he's a really good tight end, one of the top three or four tight ends uh, in the NFL right now. And here's Rip Ditto looking deep. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. And he Look at back. this. Oh, and we've got a score on the pick six. And oh, my goodness. Killer Mike is killing him on defense right now. Man, are you, are you kidding me? With the defense from this young man That's from a tough Costa break. Mesa, California. Yeah, Killer Mike definitely, uh, he got lucky there with the interception. That's a great blitz. That, there was no luck in that blitz. He gets to the quarterback, gets to Aaron Rodgers quickly. Aaron Rodgers, that's the risk of trying to throw the ball away instead of taking the sack. He coughs the ball up, and it lands right in the hands of the defensive back who returns it for six. So 21 to nothing now the score on that costly mistake by Ricky Cisneros. You look at Rip Ditto, I'm looking at my card right here, our conversation, weakness, pick up blitz. There it is right there, AJ, I'm showing it to you. Weakness, pick up blitz. There it is, folks. Weakness, pick up blitz. He just had a hard time picking up the blitz right there. Believe me, I'll, I'll pass this around. It's you tough, you know, it. it's you tough for check anybody. It check it out. Look, it says right there, weakness. Tell me, what does it say? Larry's, Six, Larry's seven, out here in Seattle like, like a like a he's right pick up blitz. like I a street line. magician showing people your card I like it though uh, that's a that's a that's a first for me yeah he does have it on his card right there pick up uh, blitz. talking about the difficulty of picking up the blitz and that is what is troublesome so far in this game for him as uh, it, when you get to the quarterback it just gives you that much less time to throw those deep routes when you're trying to pick up big yardage and you have no time to wait for those routes to develop it makes it that much more difficult and right now killer mike is sending the heat on every play and so far rip ditto hasn't been able to figure out you know the chemistry the combination to pick up those blitzes 21 points seems like a lot right now aj i mean that's that's oh good gracious that's a lot to overcome when killer mike he you know we had the saying when i played in middle tennessee in college it's like look we just want to get you in the phone but then lob you guys know about this with the seattle defense they just get you in that phone booth and you can't move it's just it's like being in a straitjacket there's nowhere to go so you're just taking that punishment and that's how tight and suffocating you, this defense is you so would far. say it's like a straitjacket i'd almost say it's like a boa constrictor the harder that you struggle the harder it is uh, to escape the grip of it and that's what this defense is going to be like the harder you try to force throws in there the harder you try and he throws another one and there's another pick oh uh, well this may have been so far the best defensive half i've seen in all of the club series so far this is the fourth one so far in the live events i don't think i've seen anything like this from killer mike i mean the, the defense is so suffocating so strong he's got it all front and back and backers pass rush uh secondary picks fumbles it's it's tough right now to move the ball on him 21 points he's laughing right now he knows good and well this kid can't score 21 points to get back in this ball game i've got this game in hand if i keep doing what i do well he better believe that uh, rip ditto can score 21 points because he did it in his last game he scored 21 yeah. points in the second half now we're talking about different scenarios here very different scenarios because uh, cody was not he had a different type of offense and then once uh, you know, Ricky discovered what the hole was in his defense. He started to exploit that over and over again, hitting those wide receivers up the seam uh, enough to put those 21 points on the board before time expired to win the game. And right now, 
Uh, he hasn't found that in Killer Mike's defense. His offense has not found the hole uh, that he's able to exploit. It's Seattle-esque, though. I mean, look at that. You're, you're getting completions, right? And guys are rallying to the ball. These 12s, they see it every Sunday at CenturyLink Field. Look at that. The receiver was wide open. Ke McCaffrey catches the ball, and you look up. Oh, great. It's a three-yard game. Well, you can have that all day long. It's now third and six. This is what they do. There is a completion of the move, but he can't hang on. Why? Because you got safeties that will knock the mess out of you. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Wherever you go, you're going to run into problems. Yeah, I think sometimes though, Ricky's probably a little frustrated that uh, Randy Moss can't hang on to that football. It, he's getting some bad he's breaks. Footsteps. I, I would say, I would say he's taking some bad uh, breaks on some of these, and then some of these, yeah, he's just throwing into coverage. He's throwing... Uh, into the secondary where where there's a crowd around his wide receiver. That one you'd like to see Randy Moss hang on to. He doesn't right there. Just like the real NFL, guys drop the football sometimes, and sometimes you don't get the breaks. And right now he's just not getting those on offense. Randy Moss does hang on to that one in traffic, but uh, it's tough to do, and it, it's tough to a tough pill to swallow when you know you've got a man and he just won't hang on to the football. Yeah, important series here for Rip Diddle. If he's got any chance to come back, he's going to have to put up some points on this series. He's going deep, almost picked off. It's tipped, and it was picked off, but out of bounds there uh, as you had uh, the uh, two former old players back there, Krause and, and, and company back there, roaming the secondary for Killer Mike's uh, secondary on his Hawk squad. Second and 10 for Rip Ditto. Looking back, he's going to hit his receiver out there. Oh, Jackson can't hang on. Should have had that, and he had plenty of open space, at least enough for a first down there. Now he's once again behind the chains, third and 10 for Rip Ditto. Yeah, he's having a lot of drop passes right now. He's going to be yelling at his offense uh, after this football game. Uh, that's a tough uh, rack catch attempt drop right there uh, out of the backfield. He thought he had some space, probably would have picked up the first down. Can't hang on to it. So tough break there again by Rip Ditto. But uh, you got to put that behind you. You got to put those plays behind you. You got a third and 10 right now. Third and 10. Twins to the left, twins to the right. Receivers, he's got a receiver across the middle, and it's McCaffrey. Able to hang on, but you look at those numbers for Aaron Rodgers. 8 of 24, 70 yards, and how many picks was that? Three? You don't see Aaron Rodgers like that in real life unless he's playing the 12s. I saw that last time they came here to Seattle, so I have seen that before, actually, yeah. in real life. Well, there's a, there's a long list of teams that have had trouble winning at CenturyLink Field. Uh, you know, the 12th man who, a lot of them are represented right here in the Mopop Museum right here. Season ticket holders here cheering on uh, the Seahawks championship. And these guys are loud every Sunday, making it difficult for teams that come into their stadium. There you go, make some noise, 12s. You're usually pretty loud. It's okay to be loud here. Be loud and proud. What's your colors here for your Madden 17 Seahawks championship here? And it's a nice crowd here. You got the Seagulls. You got some, some people taking pictures here. You got the museum. You got sci-fi. You got entertainment. And are you not entertained by this matchup here? Deion Sanders with the catch for a rip ditto fourth and inches though here we go aj crackle yeah, down he's right gonna here. no huddle into a fourth down attempt so let's see if he can get it fourth and inches for rip ditto in the gun we're gonna call a timeout not bad i like that because pretty much this is the ball game if you're not able to score here and you turn the ball back over to killer mike uh, it could be Katie bar the door time. Yeah, you hate to have to use a timeout there. I would have liked to have seen him uh, just go to the playbook on fourth down and pick the play he wanted. He thought he might have uh, Killer Mike on his heels, gets to the line of scrimmage, decides, nope, he knows exactly what I'm trying, and he has to go uh, call the timeout. Goes with the QB sneak, and he's able to get the first down. A uh, good play call there by Rip Ditto. Uh, one of the weaknesses, though, for Killer Mike, Run defense. Really doesn't have to worry about run defense when he's up 21 nothing there. So uh, I guess we've got a challenge here. Yeah. And, and the ruling on the field is? Overturned. It ripped it off. Uh, turns the ball over. I'm sorry, Killer Mike turns the ball over uh, after the attempt. They, they call the ball, uh, the, the uh, first down overturned. Or I'm sorry, no, it looks like, yep, it was. It was overturned. It was overturned? No, no, kill it. Killer Mike was on defense, so Rip Ditto keeps it. So I don't know why they say the ball was overturned because he already they had must the ball. Have, they must have said he did not get he, the he first down. And we've got a touchdown by prime time. Deion Sanders 
on the post right route down the middle of the field and he's on the board and now we have a new ball game instead of 21 nothing and killer mike with the ball now rip diddle gets it back and he throws a dot which he's been waiting to do for the whole ball game the pat is up and it is good 21-7 now. Now we've got a new ball game if Rip Ditto can bow his neck and start playing some defense. Yeah, a lot transpired right there. I got turned around myself, uh, but uh, Killer Mike does not get the uh, does not uh, stop the first down. We thought he did. Uh, Rip Ditto decides to challenge the play. He does end up getting the first down. They said he was uh, down before he picked up the first, so he challenges the play smartly. Then on the next play, he throws it to Deion Sanders into the end zone. So huge. Uh, change of events right there when it looked like he would turn the ball over he challenges the play picks up the first down and then gets the touchdown killer mike with his quarterback looking out to the right flat there and he's got he's got the goat out there jerry rice on a completion of four yards time continues to move 236 left uh, in the third quarter but plenty of time left though for uh, rip ditto to come back uh, and make this a ball game here 230 left now in the third quarter Killer Mike, second and six in the gun. Got trips to the right. Single receiver Julio Jones on the backside. Got his running back, runs right up the gut there. And he's got Coleman on the right side and picks up enough for the first yard. Six carries, 15 yards in the ball game for Coleman. Yeah, we haven't seen a ton from Tevin Coleman here for Killer Mike, but uh, he's had just enough to pick up some first downs for him. Uh, that little scamper picks up another few yards and a first down. He finds space up the middle between the tackles. So. Uh, good job there by Tevin Coleman, who is going to have another carry, and he's brought down quickly behind the line of scrimmage, Larry, after a one-yard gain. But uh, we've seen Tevin Coleman a lot, that Super Bowl edition of Tevin Coleman, uh, who's been running the ball well for a lot of these guys. Here we go, second and nine now for Killer Mike with a 14-point lead. Snap will come from around the 38-yard line. He's got a receiver wide open, and Jerry Rice completely blown coverage back there by Rip Ditto and he's into the painted end zone and once again Killer Mike gets on the board a long touchdown pass to the GOAT it's now 27 to 7 J AJ and uh, that just may have done it right there yeah I'm not Killer sure Mike. what happened it looked like uh, it looked like Ricky kind of sold out and went for the run commit he thought he had pegged it right it ends up uh, Killer Mike was throwing the football. He had plenty of time. Throws it over to a wide open wide receiver down the field. Now a 28 to 7 lead. So huge turn of events. Sometimes you like to sell out on defense, especially when you're trying to get the football back. And right there, it doesn't work out for Rip Ditto. And as our good friends Farles and Gibbs would like to say, sometimes Madden is good to you. Sometimes, sometimes it's Madden not. is not good to you. And it has been good to Killer Mike. Not so good so far. For Rip Ditto, who has the ball and he's looking to the right side. He's got Big Ed McCaffrey out there on the right side. Uh, that is a first down. That will continue to move the sticks. He's going to need a lot of plays and he's going to need the ball back down three scores. Uh, you're looking at he's got to score pretty much every time he gets the ball and he's going to have to take the ball away and, and force turnovers uh, from Killer Mike. Yeah, as Rip Ditto back in this gun tight formation. Uh, you know, when we see guys competing at this high of a level, what makes them different? What separates them from guys like you and me uh, or anyone else, to, to, <laughs> to be honest, is they put in the reps to where they know exactly the timing on these routes. They have to practice consistently to figure that out. They know the timing of the routes. They know the percentages sometimes of what when you're going to get the animation for an interception or a catch. So these guys know the game backwards and forwards. And so we're seeing it at a very high level right now. You don't generally see a 28 to 7 blowout uh, very often, especially when you're talking about guys at this high level. I think, uh, you know, if you played this game 10 times, who knows how many uh, Rip Ditto would have won. Uh, but you only get to play one here in the semifinals. And uh, right now, Killer Mike is playing an absolutely killer game. Yes, he is. Randy Maltz with a great catch across the middle. Brought some pressure that time uh, by Killer Mike. He's bringing the pressure right up the uh, A-gap there, the blitz uh, through the middle of the, the offense there. So he almost got to Aaron Rodgers, the quarterback. So first and 10, Rip Ditto doing what he's needing to do, and that is move the ball to try to get back into this ball game. First and 10 now, and it's Aaron Rodgers. Looking to the left side, and he's got Jackson. Swerves, makes a man miss, and then he's brought down there after a gain of about seven. Uh, we'll call it six there, second and four 
four, Rip Ditto, are representing the 8-3-0 outside of San Antonio and Crystal City, Texas. He's down big. Watch out on the backside there. And it's Khalil Mack once again off the offensive lineman and into a sack. Yeah, Khalil Mack, three and a half sacks so far in this game alone. He is an absolute beast on the left end there, and it allows you to not even have to blitz. He just gets natural pressure on that outside edge, beating that man. And, that, and we talk about guys tanking their offensive line. They're using bronze level players. You've got bronze, silver, gold, and elite. The elite are the red items. Uh, when you saw those, those players earlier when we were talking about the lineups, Nice completion there to Deion Sanders, but you have these levels of items, and a lot of these guys use bronze or silver, sometimes gold offensive linemen, and they're just not going to stay up with an elite 98 overall, Khalil Mack, on a consistent basis. So Rip Ditto moving the ball down the field, start of the fourth quarter, down by three scores. He's got to pick it up here, and he is moving on. Into the red zone there, and into the end zone with Jimmy Graham. Was he in? Not both feet in. He did not possession catch that one. He had to go up aggressive. The ball was a little high, so he can't get both feet in bounds. Uh, and now he's looking at third one, Larry. Third and one for Rip Ditto. Plenty on the play sheet there. He can go to anything. And he decides to hand it off to Jackson. I don't know. Second effort gets it there. Uh, and that will be a first down inside of the 10-yard line for Rip Ditto, tick, 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 420 left yeah, and in these, the ball game. And these reps just get tougher and tougher the closer you get to the end zone. Nice little run there by Jackson on that one, but it, it gets stingier inside this red zone, especially inside the five yard line, inside the 10. Uh, so it looks like it, he's doing a good job, just holding on to the football, keep running it, keep pounding the rock up the middle, don't try to force anything into traffic. 4.04 left here in the fourth quarter. Rip Ditto down by 28 to 7 score. Second and goal from around the three yard line. He's got the eye back there. He's got his tight end and he hands it off to his running back. And Jackson walks into the end zone there. So Rip Ditto on the board again with his second touchdown of the evening. It is now 28 extra point up and good. 28 14. Killer Mike with the ball. Now, AJ. Do you kick it deep and trust your defense, or do you try to go onside to try to steal another possession? You know, I think he's going to trust his defense here. He's still got almost four minutes, almost a full quarter to play here uh, in the fourth. He's got to rely on his defense, but he's got to do better than he has so far. Giving up 28 points in this game to Killer Mike uh, is not going to help you. So he needs some breaks. He needs, uh, you know, to get an interception or a turnover at some point. So let's see if he's got anything up his sleeve for that. He needs to get to the quarterback. First and foremost, you cannot give Derek Carr time in the pocket. First and 10 for Killer Mike. Hands off to the left side, and he's wrapped up by a couple of blue jersey Seahawks there. We'll call it a gain of two. Uh, great job so far for Rip Ditto. I mean, he's only allowed 21 rushing yards, uh, but it's been, it's been Killer Mike uh, who's decided to go through the air to take advantage of some of these turnovers. Uh, for Rip Ditto and converted a lot of those and that's how he has 28 points. He's done it through the air. Yeah, Rip Ditto uh, in that spinner defense where he's sending about eight guys, seven or eight guys uh, to try and stop that run. This time he drops into coverage using that linebacker. Got Antonio Brown, makes a guy miss, breaks a tackle and falls forward inside of the 40-yard line, we'll call it about the 42, close to the 40-yard line there. Uh, and that was a dot, and he moves the chains, and now he's in Rip Ditto's territory. And now it's getting a little tight for Rip Ditto. He's got to come up with something now. Everything now going forward needs to be aggressive. Yeah, huge pass there to Tim Brown. Derek Carr, 15 of 20 for over 250 yards and two touchdowns with the two interceptions. Uh, Rip Ditto hoping he can get another interception, hoping he can get a third right here on this drive. You're going to see run action here. Uh, with the lead. Bumble, oh, Bumble out. And it's recovered the by ball Rip is Ditto. Out. It's out, and he gets what he's been looking for, and that's a turnover there. So now, 2.32 left in the game. Rip Ditto down two scores, but he gets the ball back at his own 46-yard line, 54 yards away from making this real tight in a one-score game. Yeah, we see Night Train Lane there uh, signifying that they did recover the football as he completes this one to Randy Moss at the sideline. So huge play there by Rip Ditto to force the fumble, get the, uh, get the pick up the football, and have the turnover. So that gives him an opportunity, keeps him in this football game with only two timeouts, down by 14. 28-14, 2.26 left. 
Crip Ditto fresh off the fumble recovery inside the red zone, inside the 20 yard line, first and 10. He's got the trips to the right hand side. You can see the quarterback in the gun. He's got Jackson offset to the left side there. Back to pass for A Rod. Looking into the end zone on the out route, and it's caught inside of the five yard line. So now A Rod starting to pick it up. You see the numbers there. All, all over 50% for the first time on the day. Couple touchdowns as well. It started out ugly for Rodgers when he was about eight of 20 something and three picks. Uh, now he's starting to pick it up as we move closer towards the end of the ball game. Yeah, we see Rip Ditto signifying, you know, pointing forward, giving us the first down uh, marker, giving us the, the signal for the first down. He's excited about it, getting hyped as he completes that one to Ed McCaffrey at the sideline, getting both feet in. Nice tackle there. Was that Deion Sanders? Wrapping up, making a tackle. Dion's in on every play, it seems, and that guy can get to the football. He's got the speed to do it. He's got the great play recognition ability. So uh, this one, Aaron Rodgers is going to try to throw it oh, back of the end zone. Oh, to hit the pass across the middle of the seam, and that may have been the game-saving interception there by Killer Mike. What a pick there to go up and snag that thing away from the receiver. Yeah, we see Anthony Barr with the interception. One of the uh, Madden Ultimate Team favorites, Anthony Barr, picking off the pass. Great user player and a great user play there by Killer Mike who picks off the ball in the end zone, ending that drive here with only two minutes remaining up by 14. That could be the end of it with only two timeouts for Rip Ditto. Second and nine. Two minute warning here for Killer Mike. With the ball and a two-score lead, he hands it off to his tailback, Coleman. He picks up another three or four yards. It'll be third and a, uh, give him a gain of two. It'll be third and seven for Killer Mike. And we've got a timeout uh, for Rip Ditto. A buck 55 left, third and seven here. Uh, needs to make a stop. AJ, time to, you know what, bow your neck and, and make a stop if you're Rip Ditto in those dark blue. Seahawk jerseys. Killer Mike in the white jersey. Central League field. It's going crazy with the 12s. Oh, and he makes the catch to his tight end on the little out route there. And, and Cameron with the nice pickup. Yeah, Jordan Cameron with another uh, first down. Uh, Ricky wants to shout out his family back in Texas for all the support they've shown him in these tournaments. He also wants to shout out his lab partners back in Texas. Uh, he calls them the 830 boys. Uh, those are the guys he works with. And, of course, Killer Mike, he wants to mention, shout out D.A. Beast, Mr. Miami Man 27. Those are his lab partners that he wants to give a shout out to. Both these guys have fought hard just to make it this far. Uh, you got to be proud of what you've done if you make it to the semifinals of the Seahawks championship. That's a lot of games you had to play, a lot of games in Madden, and you cannot hang your head no matter what the outcome in this one. As you saw those shots of the crowd here, the crowd picking it up big time here. Hundreds of 12s here, Seahawk fans here in attendance inside of the Mopop, the Madden 17 Seahawks championship here in the Museum of Pop Culture. Love the Mopop moniker there. And when I saw it, I'm like, I'm going to the Mopop. What is that? Yeah, I looked it up I, like, oh, I thought that's it was it. just, you know, when somebody said, oh, you're going to the Mopop, I thought it was just like the, the trendy thing to call it by the locals. But no, it's literally on the building, uh, the Museum of Pop Culture. This is a really cool venue uh, right here next to the Space Needle. I was hoping I would get to see the Space Needle while I was in Seattle, and I did because it's literally right next door <laughs> uh, to, to, to the uh, the Mopop. We should go and ride the thing when we're done later on tonight. Go up to the top and, and take. You think they'll still look. be open? You think? Yeah, you, you think maybe so. All it right. was open last night when I saw it about you know ten or eleven o'clock Pacific Coast time. I think we may have to do it. West Coast, yeah. Take a good look at the Emerald City, depending on uh, what the weather looks like. Take a look at the Puget Sound. Maybe see Mount Rainier and some some other things. You got the lakes here, and you got uh, you got U Dub Washington uh, right up the road here. That's right. Yeah. Dogs, the Huskies. Yeah. A lot of U Dub fans in the crowd right now. All right, time winding down here, so it looks like, uh, barring something really crazy, and I, don't, I can't think of anything, so it is over. And Killer Mike, once again, the sixth seed out of nowhere, crashing and burning down the brackets. Great defense. Offense was, uh, as the kids like to say, on fleek. Yeah, his it offense was, was, was on good. fleek. It was pretty good. <laughs> defense wasn't bad either. Uh, he had an answer for everything. Uh, that Ricky was throwing at him, and he did a great job. Ricky also had a great run there in the second half. His, if you remember, he was down big time, down 21 to nothing in the first half. He comes back, puts 14 points on the board. So he, 
he kind of got close. Uh, he was still, you know, he outscored his opponent in the second half, 14 to seven, but it wasn't enough. And he gave up four, uh, 21 in the first half. Tough comeback, but uh, he looked good. And, and big props to Rip Ditto for making it this far. Big props to his 830 buddies back home in uh, Crystal City, Texas, and all these competitors that fought this hard to get here. But uh, we've got a great championship yes, game ahead of us now. We've got the Air Force captain and also the blonde bomber. You get the little reference of the two <laughs> planes there? So yes, the Madden 17 Seahawks Championship, it is set. And one of the uh, competitors that's moving on to the finals is standing by right now with Jackie Montgomery of the Seahawks. And she's the digital reporter. Jackie, take it away. Thanks so much, guys. Well, first of all, congratulations, Killer Mike. The sixth seed getting the upset today. How does it feel to move into the final? Feels great. Never felt better. All right. Well, they say defense wins championships, and that certainly could be the case for you with only one more round to go. What decisions went into your lineup today, being able to stop what they were calling arguably the best offense out there today? I had uh, Deion Sanders to lock up the receivers, and I had Cleo Mack coming off the edge. All right, and looking at your offense, the running game couldn't really get going, but that passing game was really effective with Derek Carr. What was working so well for you? I've been running the same formation all year. I just kept at it, kept getting better and better, and it paid off. All right now, looking at this final round, you're going to be going up against Young Kib. What did you see from him today, and what can you exploit when you guys face off? I believe he has the uh, best offense here, and I'm looking forward uh, to a great game. All right, well, best of luck here in the final, guys. Oh, and thank you for your service. Thank you. Guys.